So, <laughs> so I've said that I really like functions, and functions are fun to play with. I hope you're experiencing some of that. This is where we really get to start to take our program and decouple it, break it up into pieces, and uh, be able to start modularizing it. And I'm just using those words so that you become familiar with them if you're new to programming. So decoupling your code, like instead of having code which is all entwined together and you can't remove any parts of it, to decouple it is to break it up into modular chunks, little modules, which you could just run and swap them out even. And so we might have a function foo and we might call foo and it might add numbers up and we might implement that using a range. We might range over that slice of int like we did before. And then later we might say, I'm gonna change the implementation of that and func foo is no longer gonna use the for range clause. Instead, it will use the uh, init condition post loop. And I could change the implementation of that because it's modular, it's, you know, makes it easier. So it's just decoupling your code so it's not coupled together tightly, but, you know, is in modular chunks. Just using some of the terminology you hear sometimes when talking about programming. All right, so now uh, we're going to learn about the defer keyword. And if we look in this language spec specification, you see we have the defer keyword. And defer will defer the execution of a function until wherever it's being called uh, comes to an end. So here is a, I guess maybe we could look at the language spec to see how it talks about defer. Defer, and let's go see if it's up here. Defer statements. A defer statement invokes a function. Let me bring this down just a touch. A defer statement invokes a function whose execution is deferred to the moment the surrounding function returns, either because the surrounding function executed a return statement, reached the end of its function body, or because the corresponding Go routine is panicking. All right, so let's take a look at, uh, at defer in action. So I'm gonna create one func, func foo, and uh, have func foo print out foo. And we'll create another one, and we'll call it bar. And at the University of Michigan, in their computer science department, they have a cafe called Foo Bar, <laughs> where you could get coffee. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, and, uh, and so now I could come up here and I could call Foo, and I could call Bar, and I'm not sure where Foo Bar originates from. I know it was used in World War II for uh, an acronym for describing somebody who's effed up beyond all recognition. And so um, I wondered if that's where it comes from, but I think it has some other origin too. Uh, if you know, drop me a note. I'm sure we could probably look on Google. Maybe we'll do that at the end of this video. So you can see foo ran first and then bar. I'm going to defer foo. And now I'm going to run this and watch what happens. Bar ran first and then foo. This has been deferred. When was it deferred? It was deferred to right there. Right when func main exits, anything that's deferred then runs. And so deferring stuff is like, I open a file in my program, I wanna make sure that that file gets closed when I'm done with it. Right where I open it, right after I open it, I could say defer and I could run a function to close that file. And then that's gonna ensure that my file gets closed in my program so I'm not continuing to open and waste resources and use up memory. Because just like on my computer, if I just continue to open tab, 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 that's continuing to take up memory. And if I never close those tabs, eventually my computer will run out of memory. So if we have a program that's opening files, opening files, opening files, and never closing those files, eventually we're gonna run out of memory. We're gonna use up our resources. So right where we open a file, we could then run a function to close the file and we could defer it. And that's really good code organization because right where you're opening the file is also right where you're closing the file. You can see that, okay, I opened it and the closing is right there, very readable. And also regardless of where the function where I open the file is, <clears throat> wherever it exits, regardless of where the function that I open the file in exits, there might be a couple of exit points from that function, defer is always gonna run whenever the containing function exits. So that's kind of cool. So that's defer. 
And uh, what we were going to look up was uh, the origins uh, or uh, foo bar uh, programming define. Let's see what comes up. The term foobar and foo and others are used as placeholder names, also referred to as metasyntactic variables in computer programming or computer documentation. Foobar. Foobar, history and etymology. Foo is obscure. The use in connection with bar is generally uh, traced to World War II military slang. Foobar, later balderized, 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 that's an awesome word, balderized. <laughs> to foobar. The word foo on its own was used earlier between 1952. It appeared in the comic who stated that he used the word due to having seen on the bottom of jade Chinese figurine in Chinatown. Mm, good luck. Hmm, interesting. All right, that's enough of that. I will see you in the next video where we are going to talk about methods. We're going to learn how to create methods. That's going to be awesome. So we'll use the receiver part of functions. Mm -hmm.